Hello, my name is Dr. Adili Barucha and I'm a gastroenterologist at Mayo Clinic. On behalf of my colleagues, thank you for your interest in our paper, Phenotypic Identification and Classification of Functional Defecatory Disorders Using High Resolution Anorectal Manometry, which will be published in the February issue of Gastroenterology. As you all know, many patients with chronic constipation have difficult defecation. And normally, defecation occurs when rectal pressure, which is the propulsive force, exceeds anal pressure, which is the resistive force. So it's obvious, but not proven, that patients might develop difficult defecation, either because they cannot generate an adequate propulsive force, which is the rectal pressure, or because they don't reduce the resistance to expulsion, or a combination. An anal manometry and a rectal balloon expulsion test are first-line tests for diagnosing defecatory disorders. Manometry measures the rectoanal gradient, which is expressed either as the ratio of or the difference between rectal and anal pressures during defecation. When the gradient is low, or in some cases negative, it suggests that anal pressures are higher than rectal pressures, and obviously this gradient is not favorable to evacuation. So a negative gradient is often used to diagnose defecatory disorders, but few studies have actually examined this gradient in healthy people. And in fact, we found, much to our surprise, in a study reported last year, that all 30 asymptomatic women had a negative gradient by high resolution manometry. And so it's obvious that the negative gradient alone cannot be used to diagnose defecatory disorders. Others have reported that even patients with pelvic pain, but not constipation, have a negative anorectal gradient. So coming to this study, we evaluated the utility of anorectal pressures to characterize defecatory disorders. And to do so, we compared anorectal pressures and rectal balloon expulsion in 62 healthy women and 295 women with chronic constipation and used the principal components analysis to identify subgroups or phenotypes within this entire cohort. Without boring you with the details, principal components analysis is a statistical technique in which the program identifies a combination of variables that best explains the variance among subjects. And in this case, we incorporated seven anorectal variables, that is, anal resting and squeeze pressures, the length of the anal high pressure zone, the duration of the anal squeeze response, and rectal anal pressures, and the rectoanal gradient during simulated evacuation. After extracting the variance explained by the first principal component, the program repeats this process in an iterative manner, identifying seven principal components which explained 100% of the variance among subjects. And what was nice was that in the logistic discriminant model, three of these components or phenotypes could distinguish between asymptomatic subjects and patients with prolonged balloon expulsion. And these three phenotypes reflected high anal pressure, low rectal pressure, and a hybrid pattern characterized by high anal and low rectal pressures during evacuation. So we're particularly excited about these findings because they, for the first time, they provide the basis for classifying defecatory disorders. And now we need to move on and better understand the underlying mechanisms responsible for these phenotypes and whether they influence the response to pelvic floor retraining by biofeedback therapy. We also evaluated the ability of symptoms such as the symptom of anal blockage or anal digitation to identify defecatory disorders. And as, while as clinicians, we often find these symptoms useful in our day-to-day -day practices, um, when these symptoms were incorporated in a questionnaire at one point in time, regrettably, they were not particularly useful for identifying defecatory disorders. And therefore, all patients with chronic constipation who have not responded to laxatives 
should have anorectal manometry and a rectal balloon expulsion test to identify or exclude a defecatory disorder. Thank you for listening to this podcast and I hope you enjoy reading the article.